I'll be showing 10 new features in Microsoft Teams for Education. This includes top requests for reading progress, social emotional learning updates, insights features, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is in reading progress, and it is the number one most requested feature from teachers, and that is returning the reading fluency data marked up back to the student. I'm not going to do a deep dive into reading progress. You can go into the upper right and click the link to get the full demo. But the summary is reading progress is a new reading fluency tool to help students with reading and to save teachers time. Now I'm a teacher here and I've already made a reading progress assignment and I'm going to go into one of my assignments and return the data back to the student. So we'll click geography. Now here's the student who's turned in her work, Ashley Kozak. As the educator, I've already marked this passage up. Now I'm ready to return it back to the student. I've marked up the mispronunciations, the repetitions, omissions, etc. And you can see the correct words per minute and the accuracy rate. The new feature shows up right here and you can see this return full report to student. And you can edit this. So the default is, and I like to call this the full enchilada, which gives them everything you see here on the screen back. It gives them the words per minute, the percentages, the colors, everything. But we know some teachers say, I just want to give them a simplified view. So if I go into edit right here, I can set what the student will see. So the full enchilada is right here, but I could also choose the simplified report. And you can see the correct words per minute and the accuracy percentage don't show in this simplified report. You can also set it for just this one student. So maybe there's a student who they're not going to really appreciate to see all the numbers and the details. You just want them to see the colors. You can say, just set it for this student. Or you can say, you know what, for my entire class, I want them all to get the simplified report. For example, maybe you're teaching younger students and all the details around the words per minute and the percentages might be too overwhelming. You can just have it be simplified. Also, what I'm going to show here briefly is a couple of examples of what's going to be rolling out even a couple of weeks in the future from this one, which is the customization option. And that lets the teacher tweak it just the way they want. Here's a screenshot of what that'll look like in a couple weeks. Again, it's not rolled out quite yet. You'll see this custom option. And if I choose this option, right here, the teacher can customize exactly what they want the student to see. You can uncheck boxes, leave boxes checked. It's all up to you. This is gonna be rolling out soon. Now back to the team that I'm in, I'm just gonna set this to full report and I'm gonna set this for all assignments in the future so I don't have to change it again and I'll click save. Now this is set, I'll give feedback. Now I'll click return. Let's switch over and see what the student sees on their side. I'm signed in as a student now, and I got a notification that my assignment has been returned. There is the assignment returned. I'll go down and click view assignment. Here's the assignment with great job, Ashley. Now as a student, I'll click this and here's the new feature. This is the new student view, and you can see this is all the information, the full enchilada as I call it. So here's my correct words per minute, the accuracy rate. Now if I click on a word like physical, it shows that, oh, it was a mispronunciation. I can listen to the word, so this will play the actual read aloud voice and how it's supposed to sound. So if I said physical, and I don't know quite how to say it, I'll choose listen to this word. Physical. If I choose jump to word, it'll jump the video and the audio so I can watch and listen to myself read that word. My school geography. And I'll pause it, and I can go to any part. I can even click on here and jump to word. So now I can go and actually see myself with the mispronunciation or the other error, and I can listen to how that word should sound properly. The second new feature is the ability to import passages from OneDrive. So I'm gonna go down here in Assignments and choose Create and click Assignment. Go over here to Attach and then choose Reading Progress. You'll see a new button right here and it is Import from File. We still have the Browse Sample Library, but I'll click Import from File and now in addition to Word or PDF, you'll see OneDrive. And in just another couple of weeks, you'll see Teams added to this dropdown as well. So you'll be able to upload from OneDrive or you'll be able to choose from a team. For example, if you have a set of fifth grade teachers who all have the same reading passages, you could put all of them into a PLC team in a files area and then anyone can pick from that shared location. So that rolls out in just a couple of weeks. We'll choose OneDrive to start right now. This pulls up all of my folders and I can scroll down, pick my passage, geography, click attach. And now I've got my passage all ready to go. The third new feature is the ability to set a time limit on a reading passage in reading progress. This has been a top request from educators. So over on the right, you're gonna see a new choice time limit. And by default, it's no limit, but if I wanna set it to five minutes or three minutes, 
I'm gonna choose one minute in this case, just do a one minute read, and now I can just add that to my assignment. If you wanna see what it looks like on the student side when a time limit is set, right here you can choose student view, and now you can see the student view. And right here it says one minute to read. So that lets the student know that this is a timed passage and then they can start. I'll exit out of student view. And then I can just make my assignment. The fourth new feature lets you edit a draft of a reading progress assignment that you've created. So I'll go down in the lower part here and choose create and then assignment. We'll give it a quick title, enter the instructions, and then we'll go and click attach and choose reading progress. We'll upload a Word document quickly. And then we'll just set some information over here, genre, nonfiction, number of attempts, three, and we'll leave it at default and we'll click next. Now in the past, once I added this reading passage, I couldn't edit it. So let's say I discovered, wait a sec, I wanna change the number of attempts. I used to have to discard this and start over. Now, if I go to the three dot menu here, I can choose open in teams and it opens up my reading passage again and I'll change my number of attempts to one, click next, and now it's changed. The fifth new feature is also in reading progress and it is improved keyboard shortcuts for the speed grader to give teachers time back. So I'll click geography here and I'll open up a student. Keyboard shortcuts can help speed up the entire review process. So I'm gonna click on the word the and it opens the menu. If I use the down arrow, you'll see the focus goes down and I can go back up. I go all the way up to the and now the square has the focus. If I hit the right arrow, it goes to the next word. So I'll hit the right arrow a couple times and you'll see it navigating like this. Hit the left arrow, I can go back the other way. I can also go to the beginning or the end. If I hit end, you'll see the focus is down at water, the last word. If I hit home, focus is back up here. Now the best one, in my opinion, is the ability to hit the space bar and be able to hear that word. So if I wanna navigate, let's say I use a couple arrows and I just wanna hear her say landforms can be mountains and valleys, I'll hit the space bar right on this word. Landforms can be mountains and valleys. And I hit the space bar again and it'll pause it. So I can go to any part right like this and hit the space bar. We'll use to decide where they And hit the space bar to stop. The last keyboard shortcut is also really useful. This allows you to jump between different errors with a single keyboard shortcut. So if I start in the beginning on the, and I wanna to jump to this ficicle, I just do control period and it jumps me, I'll hit the space bar to pause it. Now if I want to jump to the next one where she does the repetition, I can do control period again. The cool features it is important. And if I want to go backwards, I just do control comma. So control comma and control period go backwards and forwards. They're just like the outlook shortcut in next previous for messages, which is also control period and control comma. So I'll go back. School geography. The next three features are all related to Microsoft Reflect. Reflect allows educators to quickly check the emotional state of their class. The sixth new feature is something called the feelings monster in Reflect. So I'll create a Reflect check-in and show how the feelings monster works. I'm signed into Teams as an educator and I'm gonna click new conversation. I'm gonna create a new Reflect check-in for my class. So right here is the Reflect button and I'll click it. Here's the Reflect dialog. I can ask a question and I'm gonna ask how are you feeling today? but I have a bunch of different questions around goals, learning, or just personal and social. There are also important privacy controls. So I can make this completely anonymous. I can make it only so the teacher sees the responses. I'll go down and click send to post this message to the class. Here's that reflect message. Now I'm gonna sign in as a student to show how you fill it out. I'm signed in as the student and here's that reflect post. How are you feeling today? So I'll go here and click an emotion, this one. Now I'm gonna name my emotion and I have lots of options. By hovering on the word, I also get this feelings monster. And this helps me visualize what this emotion might look like. Now I can hover and get the different feeling monsters. Now maybe I wanna change this. Maybe I feel a little bit differently. I choose this one. Now I have some different emotions and I can hover and get some different visualizations as well. Maybe in this case, I'm feeling a little bit anxious. I can go down and also see previous responses. So here's how I felt over time, but in this case, I'm gonna just submit my reflect for today and then close. Now I'm signed back in as a teacher and I wanna explore this daily check-in that I've done with reflect. So I go here and click explore. Now I get a nice distribution of how people are feeling across the class and I can drill in on specific students. So if I wanna drill in on the top here, I can get a sense of how Marsha, James and Eldon are doing and previous reflections. So I can look for trends or patterns. I'll go back, I'll click done. The seventh new feature is Class Insights in Reflect. So I'm gonna go over here and click Insights, 
And now I have an entire class dashboard of all the different check-ins and emotions across my class. I can look for patterns. I can scroll down and see some of the most common words that were used, cheerful, overwhelmed, creative. And down here, I can even get a student list that shows a little weekly summary of how my students are feeling. So a lot of really powerful information to get that pulse on your classroom. The eighth new feature is school-wide or district-wide insights for Reflect. This is part of our new Insights Premium offering, and the link is on the screen and in the description below. What this does is you can check the school climate over here on the right at a glance as a school leader. Now this doesn't pull any specific student names. What this does is it allows a school leader to do a quick climate check across the school and then take a look at these dashboards and have a sense of that school climate pulse, which is so important right now. The ninth new feature is content from camera, which is a powerful new Teams meeting feature that uses AI and is great for remote work and remote schooling. Let's see how this works. I'm here in a Teams meeting and I'm gonna go up to the top and click the share tray. You'll see a new choice that's called content from camera. Click this. There's three options, whiteboard, document, and video. And we're gonna show whiteboard today, but you can experiment with some of the other ones. Choose whiteboard. This brings you to the new dialogue for content from camera. Click, got it. What it's gonna do is it's gonna look automatically for a whiteboard. It's gonna scan the zone and it found a whiteboard. And you saw that it put little borders around it. And you can see me, hey, I'm superimposed on top of that. I have some options. I can change my camera right here. I can choose the content type. We'll leave it at whiteboard. I can turn off the presenter overlay. So, hey, look, now I'm looking normal. Click that on and to put you into overlay mode. You could even choose to detect the edges or not. And you can choose to scan again if you wanna get a better scan. I'll click share. Now I'm sharing and I'm gonna go write on the whiteboard. So right now you can't see what I'm writing. So I'm watching the meeting. I'm like, oh, what's Mike writing? When I'm done writing, the AI is gonna detect this. So now TPS report has been detected. Now watch what happens. I can get in front of that. I underline it. So now I can get in the whiteboard and write things and it overlays. It's really powerful. Hey, look at me, I'm dancing in front of the TPS report. And you always gotta make sure to have those cover sheets. So this is a really great way for remote work and hybrid work. Hey, here I am. You could say, don't overlay the presenter. I could also choose snapshot and watch what happens there. Now there's a snapshot of that whiteboard in the lower right. The 10th new feature is an inclusive and accessible one, and it is CART captioning for Teams meetings. CART stands for Communications Access Real-Time Translation. This is a common way to bring someone in who might provide real-time captions and translation. To create a CART link, go to the three-dot menu here, choose Meeting Options, now scroll down to provide cart captions, turn that to on, and you're gonna see a little URL and copy link pop up. And if you don't see that, make sure to hit the save button and it'll pop right up. So then I'll click copy link, and now I can just mail this link out to whoever is going to be providing cart captioning, and they have all the info they need with this link. There's also a link in the description of this video for more information on cart captions. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.